and welcome back to my channel. I have a follow-up video for you on Mr. Walter Wallace Jr. Okay, so pretty quickly this case has um, developed, so to speak, okay? Uh, what we originally know, I talked about in my previous video, which I will link below in the description box for you to watch that. Um, but in short, um, Mr. Wallace died at the hands of police um, in my opinion, at the fault of his own. Um, but uh, in short, he was called, I'm sorry, the police were called to the scene of his home where his mother um, claimed that he had been acting erratically, was being violent towards her and was running around with a knife. So when the police arrived, he continued to run around with a knife, continued to act crazy, did not comply with police. They had to shoot him because he was not listening and they had to disarm the situation. And unfortunately, Mr. Wallace died at the scene. Now, immediately, as we knew what it would happen, BLM has gotten involved, okay? They quickly organized riots. They quickly organized looting. And you have seen it all over the news. But we have had Walmarts destroyed, Foot Lockers, um, you know, pillaged, all in the name of Mr. Walter Wallace Jr. Now, I got a hold of his criminal record pretty quickly. Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of people that are gonna come after me for that, but hey, I'm sorry you guys, somebody's background matters in this type of situation because it puts context to what we are dealing with, okay? Now, keep in mind that when the police are called out to situations like this, unless they have like, a, a good amount of detail on whoever they're coming out for. Um, they don't know anything about that person, including their prior criminal history, unless they're familiar with the neighborhood, have been called out to that residence multiple times before, okay? Now, what we have found out is that police actually were called out to this residence at least two times before, and Mr. Wallace has had multiple, and when I say multiple, I mean multiple, run-ins with the law, okay? He has an extensive background in violence, um, not only against other people, but also police, okay? He um, held a gun to a woman's head. Um, he was, um, I think, accused of robbery um, with a weapon. Um, again, assaulting a police officer. At any rate, he's got something like 12 mugshots since he was very, very young, and I'll put them here so you can see them. Okay, so Mr. Wallace is not, you know, this innocent angel <clears throat> that, you know, the media wants to portray him to be this innocent victim. I mean, yes, it is very sad that he died, um, but, you know, he led a life again that led him to this moment. And I say that in all my videos when I talk about this type of stuff, that you really have to consider the fact that a lot of these people live a life that leads the, the, them to this particular moment in time, okay? So I turned on the news yesterday. Well, I didn't turn on the news. I actually opened my phone and looked at the news on YouTube. And I see uh, first a video with a lawyer already, you know, representing the family of Mr. Wallace, okay? Giving a very short press conference outside of his home, um, letting them know that he was going to be coming back later that night to um, give a full detailed press conference, but that the family, you know, wanted some time to themselves, understandably. Um, but in that short press conference, he made sure, you know, to answer a few questions for the press. One of the questions was, um, did Mr. Wallace have any children? And yes, he has nine children. In fact, um, I don't know if it's his girlfriend or his wife was actually nine months pregnant. I think by now she has delivered the baby because the lawyer made mention to the fact that she was like moments away from giving birth, like if not that night, okay? So he has a total of nine children, I think including this new one that is on the way. Um, I don't believe they're all from the same mother um, because when I was looking back at the paper, uh, unless this is the same woman, um, he's had some run-ins physically with baby mama drama. So. We're gonna leave that there. However, three of his kids, three of his kids, probably from the age of 10 to, I think maybe the youngest might've been four or five, 
came to the press conference later on that night, okay? And they pushed these babies in front of the camera, okay? And I will play a little bit of this video so you can see it. Give us their names. Zamir Wallace, me, please, please, please. Will y'all be quiet? You shut the hell up too. Come on, Zamir. Tell us your names. Zamir. What's your name? Zakai Wallace. What's your name, bud? Zana. Z Can you tell us about your dad? Okay, so we need to always hang out. Uh, we need to always go places. And we need to always play around. That's all right, son. Keep it going. Keep going. And Be we strong. need to. Hey, baby. Be strong. You can do it. And he looked to always teach me how to be a man. Alhamdulillah. Praise God. Praise God. That's right. That's right. And these white racist cops got my own dad. I'm sorry. Because. Man's man. Mm. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. And black life still matters. Oh, Amen. It's good, man. It's good. Stay strong, man. I will. But in my mind, it was disgusting. It was disgusting because they were using these children um, to, you know, spread a message to people who are watching this, to people who are easily influenced by emotion, that this man was unjustly taken away from his children. Okay. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, I don't have proof of this, but, and you guys let me know when you watch it, but in my opinion, okay, what these children were um, regurgitating, I don't think was information that they just kind of came up with on their own. I felt like what they were saying was highly coached. I don't know if it was by the lawyer. I don't know if it was by the family, but it seemed highly coached and very targeted to fit the BLM agenda, okay? So they made sure to touch on the fact that he was a good dad, that he did fun things with them, that the that the racist white police officers took their father away from them, and then they did the fist in the air and said, black lives still matter. You cannot tell me that, and if, and if this is the truth, I mean, maybe I'm like living in, um, under a rock, okay? But you cannot tell me that little kids of this age are really thinking about these things, okay? I don't know, could be wrong, but to me it just it just didn't seem right, okay? I, I really felt like if it was the lawyer or maybe BLM had already reached out to them that they really learned from the past situations and, you know, didn't necessarily put out the customary picture of Mr. Wallace, like in a tuxedo or like his sixth grade picture where he looked really angelic. They basically said, he's got nine kids to choose from. Let's use them to our advantage and put them in front of the media and make, you know, the, the, the case, you know, that these children are now going to be left without a father. In my opinion, and I know that this sounds really, really harsh to say, but in my opinion, he wasn't a good person. And the little boy said, my dad taught me how to be a man. And I sat there and thought to myself, how does your dad teach you how to be a man when your dad doesn't even know how to be a man? Okay. And yeah, I went ahead there. I went and said it. Okay. I went ahead and said it, but I'm sorry. Just because you father a child doesn't make you a father. And the life that this guy led was not a good life. He was a criminal, okay? He had mental health issues. And what woman would choose a man like this, okay, who has mental health issues? I think he was a diagnosed schizophrenic. He was on lithium, okay? What woman would choose a man like that to lay down and have children with and not only carry on, you know, violent tendencies, but also mental health issues? Mental health issues, okay? I mean, I'm happy that they had these babies that she got pregnant and, you know, she didn't go to the abortion clinic or whatnot, you know, and they had these babies, but I just feel bad because these kids are growing up in the same bad situation that it seems like Mr. Wallace came from, okay? Again, I am making these assumptions based on what I have been shown, okay, but this is just my opinion. So I think that you know, whereas in my last video, I said we really needed to see or hear the rest of the information. I know that they're going to be coming out with a 911 call. 
um, and the police cam videos, um, I think any day now. But, you know, I think it's an open and shut closed case. I think that he didn't comply with the police officers. This guy had a history, um, you know, and he just, he deserved it. I mean, it, what, what are you going to do? Like, just this, if anything, this should be an open, shut, closed case. And people should say, you know, how many more times do we have to see this before we start telling these young men, the mothers start telling or the fathers start telling these young men, don't run from the police. Don't evade the police. Don't disobey the police. If they tell you to do something, no matter what, just do it. And then go to the police station and handle it after that. Mr. Wallace would have been alive today if he would have laid down the knife, lay down on the ground and let them take him in. That leads me to another point. Um, for the most part, I was quite surprised in my first video that everybody kind of got it. Everybody really agreed that this guy, you know, um, got what he deserved in a sense. But at the same time, I've heard a few people say, why did, you know, oh, because the mother of an, or the mother apparently called for an ambulance. When she called 911, she called for an ambulance. And the lawyer mentioned that in the press conference. And he said, we're still trying to figure out she called for an ambulance. Why did the police get there first? Why did the ambulance not get there? If the ambulance would have gotten there, it wouldn't have been like this. I disagree. I totally disagree with the lawyer. And I actually know some ambulance drivers. And this guy had a weapon in his hand. There's no ambulance driver that's going to deal with that. They're going to call the police. And they're going to the ambulance is there to put you on a gurney and load you into the truck and take you to wherever you need to go. Okay? They're not there to deal with situations where people have weapons okay ambulance personnel don't carry weapons okay to protect themselves they're not trained for that that's what the police is for so do you really think that if an ambulance would have shown up or even better yet the stupid idea of a, of a mental health professional or behavioral behavioral health professional what were they gonna do this guy wasn't listening he wasn't you know in a good state of mind, you know, ready to reason with anybody, what were they going to do? This was the only option. And again, I point out the fact that now one of the guys that were, you know, like in the neighborhood that I'm sure knew Mr. Wallace, that I'm sure knew the family, offered to help, to tackle this guy, to restrain him. If there would have been two, you know, the police officers and three or four other guys, you know, saying, hey, let's all get together. I'll come from this angle. You come from this angle, make a plan. That didn't happen. Nobody wanted to do that. No, they were waiting for something to go down so somebody could have the next viral video, you know, that would make them famous. It's sad. It's super, super sad. So at the end of the day, I think this is an open and shut um, case. I mean, yes, I will be hearing the 911 call and watching the video when it comes out just to kind of get the full picture. But I really don't think there's anything um, more left to say about this situation other than Learn people, learn, teach your kids, use this video as an example, use all the other videos as an example, you know? Don't use the Barbie video on racism, use this video, this is a good video. Anyways, I uh, hope to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you think, let me know if you agree, let me know if you even care, let me know if you're tired of this, let me know if you're excited about the election that's coming in a few days. I'm super excited because I need this shit to come to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys and I will see you later. Bye-bye.